Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. What I do here in the studio is um, primarily stained glass work, but what sets me apart, um, other than I draw all my own designs too, uh, is that I make all my own lamp bases. And what I do is take copper sheeting or copper tubing or just bits and scraps of copper and, and um, uh, solder them together to look like, well, like this piece here is a very organic looking vine piece that ultimately is going to be a uh, pendant that will hang upside down from the way it's sitting now to be a ceiling fixture. I've got the, the vine work, so to speak, mostly done and the basic form is there and I am placing the agates now. I've got a whole bunch of agates here and what I use, you can see when they light up they're just gorgeous and uh, um, what I use is each individual agate I buy bulk and then I wrap copper around the outer edge of the agate and that way I can solder this to the, the vine work to, what this ultimately is supposed to look like is some sort of an organic, what I call a copper sculpture vine. Well, so if I were a copper vine, I would have agate flowers on. That's, that's the basic concept. I have all the agates already wrapped and I've already done two other pendants, so I know the, the process. The big agates I'm working with are Brazilian um, slabs that have they've been sliced and polished and the small ones they're uh, Lake Superior agate and I love working with these it's as a, as a local agate it's kind of fun but anyway you solder that on there I started doing stained glass um, uh, my wife got me a soldering iron and a glass cutter and everything I needed to get started on our first wedding anniversary. So that was 1976, and I took to it immediately and absolutely loved it. Spent the next uh, uh, 15 years um, just doing stained glass windows and lamps. Um, and then uh, slowly as the need arose, I was designing more and more lamps and I needed lamp bases that complemented the shades and I couldn't find any and so I thought I'll just make my own and then pretty soon I thought well maybe I could just cut to the chase and do everything just copper. This project is uh, just something that I've I've been toying with for quite a while but I didn't have all the bugs worked out like uh, how to devise a way to make pendant lighting that was feasible um, with this process and I've been thinking about it a long time, but I happen to have the time now, and, uh, and I had all the materials. I just got a huge shipment of agates that I was real excited about. There's a lot of structural part that I just take for granted. I mean, I've done it long enough where I, I, I think about that when I'm, when I'm uh, doing the design. I don't have to plan it out. Um, it just kind of happens. But the structuring of it and the reinforcing and the engineering of it is really important. The fixture itself, it's got these three pendants that'll hang down over a table coming from this big box. Right in the middle of these are uh, going to have a stained glass window. It'll be like four foot by two foot tall that I'm going to do all in like a woodland scene that will be surrounded by these real organic looking pendants. And then all the way around the top, up by the ceiling, there's going to be these windows that are about six inches tall and five foot long. And then the fixture itself is wood and it's all made out of cherry. And so it, it's gonna be spectacular. This is a very free form artwork. I, that's part of the charm. However, now doing a stained glass lamp, extremely planned out. Part of me likes that, no planning, just jump right in. And then I sometimes am in the mood to be totally controlled. And uh, then I need to do a a different kind of lamp and then I need to do something different so then I make a window and which is a whole different process than any kind of lamp at all and um, I never get tired of it I just kind of flip back and forth 
Um, some of the wall sconces, I don't use any glass or agate. It's all copper work. Last time you were here, I was working on the pendants that are hanging on the light fixture and I was placing agates on the copper sculpture vine. That process now is completely done. I've got it all um, wired and they're, they're in place and everything worked out great. I, I was very happy with the, with the way everything looks. In the middle of all these, I'm putting this stained glass window. Uh, and it's going to be a very natural woodland type scene with yellow moccasin flower, which are native to this area right here. So what I'm doing now is making that window. And uh, um, the process of that is first, of course, drawing the design, and then you duplicate the design onto just regular paper. So now what I've done is one pattern, you cut up like a puzzle, and then you end up with envelopes of all these d pieces of glass that are cut up like this one it's numbered and color coded what i have to do is use this and cut out an exact size um, with a glass cutter it's just a handheld plain old glass cutter and then you cut it out and lay it on the, the design and you have to do that on this particular window there's 520 pieces of glass and so it's, it gets kind of time consuming. So when I've got all these pieces of glass cut out, what I do, I have to wrap each piece of glass with this copper. It's a thin foil that has a real light adhesive on the back. It's a copper foil. You have to do that with all 520 pieces of glass. So you cut out 520 pieces of glass, then you wrap each one of them in copper. And then when everything is wrapped, then everything has to be exactly into place and then I uh, flow solder over and the solder will adhere just to the copper. It doesn't, it doesn't go onto the glass or anything and then it, you, you kind of draw the, the solder over all these lines and then that's what holds the window together. Then you turn it over and you solder the back side too. Then it will have a zinc strip that goes along the outer edge then the window has to be cleaned and you use an acid wash to darken the solder, which is bright silver, and I want this one to be a dark brown color. Um, and when this is all said and done, then it's ready to be mounted in the light fixture. Um, and I've never done a stained glass lamp that has a stained glass window in it. This is just, uh, um, it's, it's kind of encompassing everything that I do all in one big package deal. I, I'm, I'm very excited about the, how it's gonna look when it's all done. Once the design is drawn, which is the art part, the artistic, then comes the color selection, which is very vital as far as having an eye for color. The rest of it is just technical stuff. Sometimes I'll spend a day or two. I'll get the first day, I'll just pull out all this glass and line it all up and think about it and then come back the next day. And then when you actually start making the window, I usually always start with the background and then work my way through it and I might change my mind, but it could be up to a three day process of just picking out glass color. And likewise, for this particular fixture, there's a place now up at the top that lights up um, that's a, the square box part of it. And I had no idea what I was going to put up there. I had like 10 different ideas. My original was that it was going to be an agate window, just solid agates filled in. And I started uh, playing with that and it turned out really not nice. <laughs> it just didn't work at all. And uh, so I just put it aside, made this window. I got to this point and yesterday it, it came to me that I could just uh, I know how I'm going to do it now. It's going to be more of the pendant look with those thick gnarled vines, but there's going to be these little drop downs. So I never know what I'm going to do until that time. I have to keep focused on the end results and how exciting that is. It's probably the most grandiose ceiling fixture I've made to date. I'm real excited about it. Who knew they needed a great big light fixture like this unless they've seen it. No one's ever seen anything like this. so. I figured now is the time I'm gonna make one and then just find the right customer for it. Um, what I'm selling are family heirloom type things. These pieces are all original, signed and dated, 
and uh, they want something that their kids can appreciate years to come, and they really love um, this kind of artwork. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4, 2008.